Hello, my name is Tiffany. Welcome to episode two of the Adventures of Crafty Pearl Girl. That's me, and I'm so stoked because I got a light this time. So I just want to give a shout out to my husband who saw my first video and told me that my lighting was really bad and I had to get a light. <laughs> so he picked one out for me and it works great. I'm really excited. So hopefully you can see um, everything so much better. So if you're a returning viewer, welcome. I know I said I was going to podcast or do another vlog in two weeks, but it's more like two and a half. I'm just trying to figure out my schedule. Um, if you're new, welcome. This is my knitting YouTube channel where I just like talk about my knitting and my crafting that I've been working on. Um, so I have lots to share with you. I'm finding like I don't finish tons of projects all the time, but I'm constantly thinking about new projects and thinking about like things that I could work on and yarns that I like and I'm getting inspiration. So I'm wondering if that's going to be like the trend <laughs> of my podcast is me mostly just talking about stuff that's like really inspiring to me and then like occasionally showing you stuff that I finished but we'll see it's only the second episode um okay so I'm gonna talk to you first about what I'm wearing um okay I'm gonna do like my awkward kneeling stand so I am wearing the local yarn store cardigan lys by Andrea Mowry I started this in October of last year and I put it on hold for a while because it was really hurting my hands and then I finished it in May. It's a little funny with the, it's got like a nipped in waist so it can look a little bit funny with like a t-shirt underneath but I think it's so cute anyway. Um, so I love wearing it. Um, the yarn I think is Quince and Co, whatever one of their fingering weight is and like this burgundy color. I had originally bought it for a Hohe Locatelli boxy sweater because I was like I love this color let me do this big drapey sweater in it but this yarn it's like really tightly like plied together and really bouncy so it doesn't have that like super drapey feel that you would want for a boxy sweater it's a lot better for like more structured garments so it's working really well for this cardigan um I did go down a size all my stuff is in my Ravelry page I did go down a size um, just based on everyone's feedback um, in the Ravelry comments. I don't tend to button up my cardigans, but I didn't want it to be super huge. Um, my only kind of eh about it is the sleeves are just like a little bit loose for me. I, you know, for a fitted cardigan, I'd want the sleeves a little bit tighter and I did make them a little too long. Like they're not quite bracelet length. They're not quite three quarter length, but I tend to like shift them up like this. So it kind of gives it that relaxed look anyway. So I think it, it ends up working out. Um, what else did I want to say about this? Okay, this is my first ever, I'm gonna sit. This is my first ever cardigan or sweater pattern or anything I've done bottom up. Um, I liked it because you do the sleeves first, like up to here, and then you do the body and then you like connect it all together. So it actually made sleeve knitting less painful because I hate sleeve knitting. Like I hate it. Like a sweater will sit for six months because I hate doing the sleeves. Um, so that was really nice because it was like, once everything was connected, you just had the yoke and you were done. The only negative that I had to it was because it was worked flat. Once the sleeves and the body were all connected together, um, when you would knit around, it was fine. But when you would have to flip it inside out and purl around, when we were at the sections here where there's like a ton of sleeve stitches and you haven't decreased a ton, all of those sleeve stitches would get scrunched up really tight on the needles. And it was really difficult to like purl across those rows. So I think that that's mostly because this was knit flat bottom up. Um, I think if this was knit bottom up, um, like in the round and then steaked, you'd be knitting the whole time around when you connected the sleeves with the body and you wouldn't have that issue. Um, so definitely like pros and cons to the bottom up, right? Like it was cool to do this, the sleeves first. Um, it was less cool because I made them too long on accident because I didn't know like where they would start with the body. Um, it was cool because once you connected it, you just had the yoke but then working them back and forth <clears throat> or front to back, it was really difficult on the pearl side. So just some notes that I have, but in general, like by the time I was done with this, I was super stoked. Um, I got these buttons just at Joann's. I haven't fallen down the button rabbit, rabbit hole yet. I know a lot of people like to get really cute, like vintage buttons or go to shows and get them. I haven't done that yet. <laughs> um, 
excuse me. I haven't done that yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if I do because I really do love wearing cardigans. Um, so yeah, LYS. I like it. It's cute. Oh yeah. And then my buttonholes don't work at all. I did her instructions for the buttonholes and they're like teeny tiny, like teeny tiny. Um, so I did one and I was like, pretty sure this isn't going to work, but then I know I never button up my cardigans. So I was like, eh, it's fine. So yeah. Um, local yarn, LYS local yarn store cardigan by Andrea Mowry. And I'm taking off my sock. Um, I'm also wearing hand knit socks. <clears throat> These are just plain vanilla socks I've done on my own with a uh, heel flap and gusset. And the yarn is by Dragon Horde, De Dragon Horde Designs. It's called Pop Rocks and Candy Corn. And I got it as a Halloween yarn one or two years ago. I think two years ago. And I just loved it. It's just so fun. Um, this like striping effect is a lot more prevalent on the camera than it is in person. I would say it's quite evenly speckled throughout, um, which is a thing that I find is an issue sometimes when you get hand dyed yarn is it pools a lot especially in socks but these they're not so that's what I'm currently wearing <clears throat> okay let me talk to you about whips what I've been working on so in my whoop lost ball in my fringe supply co bag which I can't remember but there's a I know there these guys are out of business but there is a indie fabric company that has the pattern for the fringe supply co bag so you can buy the pattern and make your own um i'll probably never do that but cool to know um so in this bag i'm working on my pink pink velvet by andrea mary okay this one's kind of bumming me out right now i'll be honest so the last i met with you i had just finished the yoke and i hadn't separated for the sleeves now that i have a better lighting situation I'm gonna show you again because I think you'll be able to, yeah, so much better. Because before it just looked like this big like block of teal and you couldn't see anything. Now you can see like there's actually a pattern in there. So that looks really good, right? Oh, so good. From far away, it'll probably just look like a block of teal, but like up close you can actually see like the design. Let me see, can you see that? Yeah, that's the design. So lovely. Um, so this is the fuzzy stuff is knit in Shibui and this really lovely, Fuzzy yarn, tweed silk cloud. Really expensive. I had to get two skeins. I'm glad I did because I wouldn't have had enough if I just had one, but um, not cheap. So I'm just calling that out now. I'm aware of that. And then the <clears throat> main fabric is in Peary by Brooklyn Tweed in the color Gingerbread, which is like totally my jam right now. It's got the same feeling as this Clinton Co. stuff, like very tightly spun together, very bouncy, holds the structure really well. So tale of woe. I like got done here. Um, I got done with the yoke and I went to separate for the sleeves. I did that last night while Chris and I were watching, that's my husband, we were watching a scary movie, a scary show. And so I was like counting, like ugh, counting stitches. And then like also like looking at the TV like this. And then today when I was knitting on it, I added another skein of yarn. And when I did, I realized that the new skein was like way lighter than this section I had right here. And I was like, oh no, like what happened? Like I had knitted like an inch. And I was like, oh no, what happened? When I looked and I realized that the skein that I had added, this skein was in a, a slightly different dye lot than the other skeins I had been working with. Working with. All the other skeins were, like it's a very technical dye lot. Lot 678.1903 is what everything else was in, and this was in point 1902. So that I like remembered, I had like a fl like pff, flashback, and I remembered buying this yarn at Hill Country Weavers in Austin, Texas, where I'm originally from. I remember buying the yarn, and to get the skeins that I needed, they told me, hey, we don't have all the skeins that you need in one dye lot. You have to get one that's not in the right dye lot. And they're like, you know, use it for like a sleeve. And I was like, okay, fine. So I just forgot that I had done that. So like, I was like, okay, that's my bad. So I ripped that section out and I wound up a new skein in the same dye lot as everything else. And I went in and I added that. And the same thing was happening. Like it's still a different, like a slightly different color. It's like lighter. Um, so then I was like, well, crap. So then I did another a third skein and I added, tried to add that in and it was still lighter. So then I tried to alternate the two. And then all I was doing was doing that like helical knitting with two colors that were 
matching but still didn't match the original yoke and like I'm sure it's not gonna like yeah see right there there's like that perfect little line of lighter so that whole like this whole section down is gonna be dark and then this on the rest of the body of the sweater is gonna be lighter and you can kind of see the same thing happen here in the yoke too there's a little bit of like the gingerbread yarn is lighter in the yoke than it is here so my guess is I ended up using a whole skein of yarn in this section and then I switched out but that skein was the was darker so I was doing helical knitting it wasn't really helping so I stopped because that just annoys me so now I had like two rows of helical knitting and I had ends to weave in but I just didn't want to deal with it anymore so I'm a little bummed um I've definitely had a sweater before where I um, did not alternate skeins and I changed a skein like right here at the bust line and there's like a distinct difference in the two colors um, and the same thing is happening here and that's like pretty frustrating um, but like I mean what am I gonna do at this point I guess I could rip back completely to the yoke and then take that skein of yarn that's darker and put it somewhere else and then knit everything else with a lighter I could do that but that's quite a lot of knitting so I think I'm just gonna stick with it the way that it is I mean it's a hand it's a handmade garment I'm annoyed but I'm annoyed like like I'm annoyed so whatever um but my goal is to get this done before my husband and I go on a trip to Scotland at the end of November I'm so excited so we're gonna go at the end of November and I just would like to have this cute little sweater done by then um the only alteration I'm definitely planning on doing is a or two I guess a I want to make sure that I'm doing a tighter sleeve. I like tighter sleeves. Um, and I think that my, I think that normally Andrea Mowry people say that her sleeves and her patterns are too tight and they're perfect for me. So I just want to make sure that like it's a nice fitted sleeve and not like this situation again. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a little bit of waist shaping. So this is a cropped sweater, which I started pairing with like slightly high-waisted skirts and it looks super, super cute and I really like that style. Um, but because I'm short-waisted and fuller busted, it's like I end up having this like huge round of fabric around my waist, just kind of like sitting where the skirt starts. Um, and I don't want it to be like that much ease at my waist when I have like a fitted skirt, like a fitted waistband for my skirt on. So what I want to do is add in some waist shaping, probably in the front and the back, just to like bring it in just a little bit. Like it doesn't need to be like super thin or fitted, but like, I just don't want it to be like flapping in the wind. Um, so I'll keep you posted as I do that. But right now I'm just like sad face because I don't like that there's going to be a color difference there that's going to bother me. Um, but you know what? I don't know. I don't know what. That's the problem. That's why, that's why I'm so annoyed. <laughs> okay. My second work in progress in my ramen noodle bag <laughs> is my Gin and Juice by Thea Coleman. So I told you guys last time that I had started this pattern and I screwed up on my gauge and I was using way too small of a needle and it was hurting my hands really, really badly. And like every time I picked it up, I would be sad. And so finally I like sat down, did a ton of measurements and realized that I was completely off on gauge and it was way too small. And like I was making like a suit of armor, like it was gonna stand up on its own by the time it was done. So once I realized that, like I immediately ripped it out. I didn't wait, I did it that day because I knew if I had to think about it for a few days, I'd come up with some reason not to. So then I cast on again and the correct needle, I think I actually went up two needles cause I am a tightener. But anyway, I got so much done. Oh my God, I'm gonna show it to you. Look at it so good okay I'm gonna get close I can't see but I'm assuming you can see the cables <gasps> oh I love it so much oh it makes me so happy so it's a big bottom-up cardigan it's gonna like wrap around like this like dish and then there's a big shawl collar that's gonna go all the way around um, the sleeves are all in reverse stockinette um, I think they're like a drop sleeve situation. I don't love how it looks. Um, the sleeves are just kind of slouchy and not that exciting. Um, I have seen though some people take like a panel of the cable and do it down the arm. And I think I'm going to do that. 
I think I'm going to torture myself on Sleeve Island just a little bit more. Um, so yeah, so I'm super stoked. So the cables, what's cool about them is they grow. So they start like kind of smaller and then they start to open up more. So now I'm at the part where I have full like diamonds, which down at the bottom, I just had V's. So I do, I think another like repeat and a half of this like full diamond section up here. And then I start doing something to decrease for sleeves or whatever. Then I do something else. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's going so much better. Um, the other thing, I think I mentioned this last time and I forgot to tell you, like I had a trick for my cables. Um, what I was doing when I was following the pattern is there's all these little charts, right? Like this crazy cross with the dot means two in the back, hold two to the back, knit two from the front and purl two from the back or whatever. And then the, the same crazy cross the other way was like hold two to the front, purl from the back, knit from the front. And I was trying to read every single repeat like that. Like, okay, hold two to the back, knit to the front, purl to the back. And I was just getting stuck all the time and messing it up all the, all the time. So then I just started to think about it as like, these are like little woven pieces trying to like weave through the fabric. So instead of thinking like two to the front, one to the back with a pearl and the blah, 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 I would try to go like, okay, we're gonna bring it together. We're gonna send it apart. We're gonna pick up a pair. We're gonna like bring the outside to the inside or bring the inside to the outside. And so I started looking at it like that and then remembering that pearls always stay in the back of cables. Like what if the cable is a knit, you want that in the front, not the pearl. Help me know immediately like, looking at the looking at the pattern and looking at the next row like what was going to happen so it ended up going so much faster um i do my cables with a cable needle the ones that go to the back i have to put it on something to hold it into the back otherwise those stitches just keep unraveling but i don't need to use a cable needle when i'm cabling with stitches held at the front so i think andrea mowry has a just like a tutorial on it or you can search like on YouTube cabling without a cable needle um so I can only do it half the time but that still saves me some time so yeah so I'm really excited I'm a little bit scared of the shawl collar because it's like a huge just ribbing all like all the way around and I had to do that on one shawl cardigan that I have and I was like, oh, yeah, I'll just do the collar. And then I started it and I was like, oh, my God, this is like a whole other sweater. Um, so I'm trying to work on this as much as I can so that it doesn't just languish forever. But I'm also trying to remind myself that this will be like a piece that I keep forever. So if it takes me a little bit more time to do or I lose steam and have to come back to it, like that's OK. So I'm trying to remind myself that. Um, so, yeah, that's the Gin and Juice by Thea Coleman. So those are the two projects that I'm really spending the most of my time on right now. I was totally on a sock jam during the summer and that seems to has, have fizzled out, but I'm sure I'll pick it up again at like Christmas time because I like making, I like the idea of making festive socks. I just haven't done a ton of it. Okay, now I'm gonna talk to you guys about what I've been inspired by. There's like a whole pile here. Um, okay. First, when I when we moved back to Seattle and I got my own craft room, because I've never had my own craft room, I've had to like jam my crafting into like the bedroom or like convert the dining space into a craft space, but it was like out in front of everything. This is like the first time I've had a room room. Um, I mean, I hate having to pack all my crafting up, but the cool, like fun thing about it is like you throw all your yarn on the floor and stuff starts to like land next to each other. And you're like, oh, like oh, I never would have thought of putting those two together. But the, those look really, really beautiful. Or, oh my God, I have three like dusty pink colors and three different dyers. Like apparently this is a color that I like. Maybe I should start knitting with it. Um, or I found in this last move that I had what looked to be like a possible fade situation that I was really, really excited about. Um, so this yarn is by Stress Knits. It's called Dusk. It's just this lovely like, I don't know rosy beige variegated yarn I had this one by Knox Yarn Co called Hot Cocoa and she had this paired with like a speckly mint um which I always thought would be a really cute cowl like a two-sided brioche cowl or something but I'd never done it if you can hear weird sounds it's my neighbor's water turning on and then this one I bought at a Knit City Vancouver <clears throat> by Seawall Fibers called Quartz Sock 
and like it seems like okay like what's going on but like this black in here and then like the brown and then you get the beigey I don't know there's something about that I just like lost my mind oh it's the quartz sock is the fiber line it's called sanidine I think that's like a type of crystal but like together like look these butts are like the same color but then where it gets tripped up oh there's like a hair on it is like this matches like this so I'm like what do I put those two together and then these two together but then I feel like having black in the middle makes it not quite fade into this but then like those are the same I don't know but I've I've seen these together and I've had them stacked together as like a maybe shawl and the shawl that I have in mind for this is called Powder and Dust by Vera, Val Vera Valimaki. It's a three skein triangle shawl. I love triangle shawls, they're my favorite shape. I started adding tassels to all of my shawls and I highly recommend it. They're really fun to just like fling, like when you're sitting and like -la 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 with your tassel all day. Um, but I need to do a swatch. I need to like skein these up or wind these up and then do a swatch and see how this black section reacts. I'm just sad because I feel like I'm going to do it and I'm not going to end up liking it. So I've kind of like put off doing it and just like kept them together. Um, but I don't know. I just think that would be really, really cool. Very like almost autumnal, like moody. My mom, if she's watching this, would laugh. She laughs at me whenever I talk about liking things that are moody. So anyway, I would highly recommend if you have an opportunity to and you have like yarn hanging around throw it all on the floor and just kind of see how stuff mixes up together it's really fun so that's one thing I'm inspired by the other thing I'm inspired by is I have purchased some yarn by yarn cafe creations I purchased some last year and then I got some again this year I get really inspired by her palette at fall I mean she's got a wonderful collection of yarn and like really bright happy colors but some of her fall colors I'm like girl so I got this guy is called Cinnamon Pumpkin Latte. I mean, look, it's like the same color. Oh, girl. Oh, my God. I love this light. Thank you, Chris, for making me get a light. Look at that. Ugh, so good. Cinnamon Pumpkin Latte. And at the same time, I ordered Hot Cider Nog. <laughs> Nog. Oh, my God. Look at that, too. Oh, it's so good. So when they came together, I was like, they're definitely not the same, but they're very similar. <laughs> so then I put it in my little pile and it fell next to the Yarn Cafe Creations I bought last year, which was called Honey Crisp. So this one's definitely a lot more vibrant. And when I got it, I thought about doing like a hat. I don't know, that might make me very rosy. I'm already quite rosy. I don't know if I need more. Or like mittens. But then when I put them like next to each other, I was like, well, I don't know. Maybe that could work as like a fade situation. I feel like the contrast between these two is a little too much, so I'm not sure. Ugh, so good. So my other thought was there's a pair or a sock pattern called Chicken Scratch Socks by Lauren Colby. I think it has like, it's like stockinette where you like drop down into the fabric and then you pick up like a V. Um, so... It's like supposed to be really, really great for variegated yarn and it's supposed to be a really great way to show off like really colorful yarn. So I was thinking maybe I could use this and just like let it shine. I always think about socks. I always buy single skeins and think socks, but I'm trying to expand my horizons. So that's my other thing I'm inspired by. And I like this trio. But yeah, I would check out, if you like these, check out Yarn Cafe Creations cause love it. Okay, a few more things. The other thing I'm inspired by is um, I'm trying to use up my, my stash and I'm trying to work with fabrics and yarns that aren't just fingering weight or DK. Ooh, excuse me. Fingering weight tends to be the yarn weight that I go towards. But when Chris and I moved here earlier this year, we went to the farmer's market and we were walking around and there's a stall that had all these like, beautiful fruits and vegetables and produce. And then I saw yarn in the back and I was like, yarn! <laughs> So I went, um, and it was yarn that the farmer and his wife, um, you know, spun up from the, I think it's Icelandic sheep that they have in their flock. And so I just bought a ske big skein of yarn and he was like, would you like any vegetables or produce? And I was like, no, I'm good. I'll just have some yarn. Thanks. <laughs> so I bought this 
and it is so fuzzy and floofy and like there's like thick spots and thin spots and it's just so like yummy and scratchy there's nothing like super soft about this the best thing though is that when I brought this home our little cat Missy like found it and immediately got like hunter face and like would hold on to it and try to like bunny kick it so I think the the sheepy smell she really really liked but I just thought like how cool is that to like get to like get yarn that like the wool grew up not too far away from here so um I've been kind of inspired I've had it for a little while I want to I want to knit a hat from it big fuzzy hat. Um, I found a pattern called the Lopi Braided Hat by Haldora J. I think it's a free pattern on Ravelry. It's just like rib and then like just a few cables that come up. Um, I really wanted to make sure I was looking at bulky hats on Ravelry. I really wanted to make sure that whatever I picked looked good with super fuzzy yarn. Um, a lot of cabled stuff or other stuff was like really pretty, but it was like bulky yarn that had like a nice twist to it. So you could see every stitch. This is just going to be like a fuzz machine. So I wanted to make sure that I found, oh my God, look how thin that section is. Ah! And then like how thick these ones are. Ah! Okay. So I think I might, I feel like that'd be like a weekend project, right? Like started on a Friday and by the end of the day, Saturday or Sunday morning, it's done. So I was thinking about making this into big hat. Um, so I encourage you to scope out at your local farmer's market if they've got yarn. But no, I'm like, I literally have a dream that when it's really cold outside, I'm going to go with my hat on and be like, I made this, <laughs> look, and be like that creepy lady at the farmer's market, like run up to their booth, not just to random people, go up to the booth and be like, I made it from that yard. And they'll be like, uh-huh, <laughs> I would totally do that. So yeah, okay. Um, okay, and then last, well, it's not last but not least, but it's like an idea. I'm starting to think holiday i I'm starting to think advent calendars. I purchased my first ever advent calendar by Farmer's Daughter Fibers last year. Um, it was really fun because it was like half yarn, half like self-care items. So it was like lotions and hot cocoa and candles and creams and it was really fun. Um, and then the yarn was all DK um, and then it came with a pattern and I'll have to bring that out next time because I did it. But it was a little cowl and it was like a choose your own adventure cowl. So it was basically just like six or seven, maybe even more motifs that you can kind of put in whatever order that you want. Like cocoa mugs and snowflakes and mittens and all kinds of cute stuff. And so um, with the DK weight yarn, it actually went pretty quickly. So I ended up make, making that whole cowl and finishing it on Christmas. So I really liked it. Uh, I did not get a um, advent calendar this year from anybody, um, mostly because they have to go, I get it, they have to put them on sale like in May. And at that point we had just moved and it was just not financially feasible because they usually started like $200 for those things. So I did not get one, but I've been like sad about it and thinking about it. So I did two things. One, going through my stash. Two years ago, I bought the Hue Loco Color Riot kit called Sexy Christmas. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my God, I love it. It's so good. I bought it and I told somebody at work about it and they were like, Sexy Christmas. And I was like, just wait. And then when it showed up and I, I brought it to work and they're like, oh yeah, that's totally Sexy Christmas. <laughs> so it is 10, 10 gram minis and they like fade really nicely into each other. Um, I think it ends up being 180 yards. So like just shy of two skeins of yarn. But I keep thinking like I need to come up with like the best, best way to use this. So I've been saving it. I haven't done it for anything. Um, there's a Andrea Mowry cardigan where she has like little pops of color like in stripes. I thought that could be cute, but that would leave a lot of leftovers. Um, I've thought about doing a shawl, but again, I like to do the more triangular shawls and I can't find one for fingering weight yarn that's like within the yardage requirements that I need for this one. I mean, I seriously just need to like find a way to do the math to make my own triangle shawls because those are my stinking favorite. Um, there are also some cowls I found, but again, I don't think I would use almost two full skeins of yarn to do a cowl. I mean, that would be like <laughs> so huge. So I'm thinking about it, but I don't know. If you're feeling sad about not having Advent yarn, I would recommend going through your stuff because um, you might have purchased something and then never got to it. There's tons of Christmas, uh, not tons. There's a few Christmasy things I have in there that I'm gonna go for. But if you have any suggestions on something great to do with the fade, that is 180 yards, 
please let me know. I have some ideas, but I'll keep you posted. Um, speaking of Advents, I did not buy an Advent. I did, though, get a mini one for halloween -y time. I'm not a huge, like, Halloween being scared, decorating my house scary person. I do think dressing up's really fun. I do like autumn. I do like, like, a good sleepy hollow crimson peak vibe. Um, but I like, like, cozy autumn a little bit more. And so Teensy Button Yarn announced a few months ago that she was going to do an over the garden wall like 12 day or 13 day mini skein club. And if you haven't heard of it, Over the Garden Wall is a super cute animated series. It's very autumnal. It's set at like Halloween -y time, um, following like two brothers who are like lost in some woods that like encounter all kinds of crazy, funny characters. Um, I still don't truly understand the meaning of the show, I'll be honest, but it's really adorable. I love the music, I love the visuals. Elijah Wood is one of the main character voices and he's a hoot. It's great. So anyway, I ordered the Teensy Button Over the Garden Wall, I think it's Into the Unknown, uh, mini skein club. So it came in a super cute box and it had like a whole little like introduction into Over the Garden Wall. And then you get little packages that are numbered, 13 of them leading up to Halloween, and then one skein, one big skein in there. So today was day two, um, so I'm gonna show you the first two, because I love them. The first one is called Potatoes and Molasses, of course, because the best song ever in the show. And it is this great, like, creamy color with brown and like a little bit like a rusty color and some yellow in there, like buttery potatoes with molasses. If you don't know the show, you won't get it. But if you know the show, you know, of course, you had to start with potatoes and molasses. And then the second one is called Frog O' Mine. Oh, it's so good. It's like green with these like blue speckles. It's like a makes me think of like a lily pad. So these are the first two. I don't know if they're going to, I mean, I don't know. I'd say those like transition together nicely. I don't know if the whole set's going to fade. I'm not sure. Um, once again, I'm getting myself into mini skein world where I'm not going to know what I'm going to do with them, but it's been really, really fun. I put this on my desk before I go to bed every night so that when I like come in here in the morning and I'm getting ready to work, have my coffee, I have my box there and I remember like, oh, I get to open a mini skein today. Um, so I'm super excited about that. I think it's super cute and I need to, once I'm done, I'll see if there's like a pattern or something I want to do with it. I have a feeling I'll probably hold on to this whole thing until next autumn and then maybe knit with it but we'll see so then this is my last thing so that got me thinking right i had my little sexy christmas kit i've got my teensy button over the garden wall thing and i'm like oh i really like opening something every day and i really liked doing that for christmas last year but like i'm not gonna do like a whole like now i can't buy an advent calendar even if i wanted to and then I remembered that Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade had a whole little thing about making your own advent calendar. <clears throat> and at first I was like, I read it. It was cute. I mean, basically it's talking about like, look at all the sashes you have and all the leftovers that you have and like, you know, come up with, you know, wind them up and, and set them aside for yourself or trade them with a friend. Well, I think like I mentioned in my first like knitting podcast, I don't have a ton of knitting friends. I don't really have that many at all. So I don't have anybody to share stuff with. So I was working on a project yesterday and I was like, you know what I do have though, is I used to get the row one yarn club last year. I think I got it for like seven months and I had to stop because it was just like so many mini skeins. So if you haven't done the row one yarn club, it's like 30 something bucks a month. You get 10, 10 gram minis and they're all wound up and they're from a mystery dyer every month. And it's usually like their 10 most popular colors. And they're super cute. You get 10 of these and they're labeled with the color and the dyer. Um, super fun. I mean, look, so many great, oh, that one's great. So many great colors. <clears throat> so I have like, this whole bag isn't filled with it, but I have quite a lot. And so I was like, you know what I'm gonna do? I always wanted to do the Habitation Throw by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. It's just like a big square blanket that you do with fingering weight yarn on I think like size four needles and everyone like raves about how great it is. So I was like, I'm gonna do it. So I pulled out a ton of those mini skeins and I pulled out the little containers that you got from last year's um, Farmer's Art of Fiber 
advent calendar and I made my own. <laughs> so I put out all these like, I, this time I went with like all soft pastel colors because I always think that that aesthetic looks really, really pretty. And I admire people like Sweet Sparrow Knits who like do, there's a fire truck going by. I apologize if you can hear that. I always admire people like Sweet Sparrow Knits or other people who always go for like the soft pastel, beigey, pretty colors. For me, I struggle with that because like then I get distracted by autumny colors or like super bright colors. So I was like, okay, for my advent calendar that I'm making myself this year, I'm going to stick with like soft pastels. So I'm not going to open all of them, but I pulled out, that's not the best example actually, because those are not pastel at all. I promise when it's all together, it looks great. Okay. Like really soft. Like that's a soft one. That's day, I labeled it day 14 and I put it in the little 14. Some of these I had to put two in because I didn't have a tin for every day. Like, let's see. This one. This one I have two in, uh, but I label them. So that's day 16. Look, it's like soft and lovely. And this one I did skein up from a ball of yarn I'd use for another project. So I don't know. I thought it could be really fun. A fun way to use a yarn that I have. It's not yarn that I've like really worked with a ton. It's really like I got it. I thought it was cute. And I put it in a bag because it was the mini skeins. Um, but I thought that would be a really fun way to like give myself something silly and fun to open every day or every other day and then like work on the habitation throw um, throughout the holiday season. So <clears throat> again, I inspire you to look around at your stash and see what you have and see what you have that you can make work for um, seasonal stuff or like advent calendars because I'm really enjoying that so far. Um, yeah. So I think that's everything that I have this time. I will definitely try to come back again in two weeks. Um, hopefully I'll have, I don't know, maybe I'll have the body done on this. That would be cool. Maybe I'll have the body done on this one, like working on the sleeves or the shawl. That would be cool too. I don't know if that's going to happen, but we'll see. Oop, losing a mini scheme. Um, but yeah, so if you like this, um, please like and subscribe. That helps other people will find me on YouTube. Um, again, I'm Tiffany, Crafty Pro Girl. Um, I'm going to try to come back to you in two weeks. But if you have any questions in the meantime, please shoot me a question. If you have any suggestions for this, this yarn, please let me know. And then let me know if you find any yarn at your farmer's market. Because I think that's like the best. <laughs> anyway, it was great chatting with y'all. Have a good rest of your week. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.